uh, Linda Burton. I look after wholesale for three in the UK. And three is the smallest operator in the UK, the Challenger brand in the UK. We've got 10 million subscribers. Um, so smallest by customer numbers, but really hungry data users um, with the three consumer. I'm using three and a half times the average data usage um, compared to the market. So 5G is quite an exciting time for us and it's, it's good to be at the event. So Three's plans for 5G rollout started many, many years ago and we've been delivering on our transformation for three years now. We've gone a transformation of the whole network from um, site upgrades um, on the radio access network we have put our whole core network hosted it in the cloud, which will be the first time that's been done globally anywhere. And we have upgraded all of our IT applications to get best of breed IT applications to really capitalize on all of the benefits that 5G will bring. Because the most important bit of it is actually the spectrum, and 3 um, has the largest holding of spectrum of any network in the UK by a significant stretch. Um, we are the only network that actually has 100 megahertz of contiguous 5G spectrum, which meets the ITU standards to get the best experience from 5G. So that program already delivering results for us now and continues on with the site upgrades for another few years, bringing 5G to where our customers are. So the first 5G use case that 3 is focused on is actually fixed wireless access. Um, so a lot of the other operators seem to be focusing on mobile, but it's going to be a, quite a long time before the device cost comes down. Um, and, so, and then that democratizes 5G for mobile. So we're focusing on fixed wireless access, which has a lower price point and a much easier business case um, for 5G. Um, so five, the fixed wireless access proposition will be double the speed of the average fixed broadband product. Um, and there will be no need for you know, digging up the roads and booking an engineer, it's sending a router in the mailbox. Um, so for 85% of consumers in the UK, it will actually provide a better experience um, with a saving, cost saving as well. Um, so that's going to be our first uh, product to launch and that will be um, within the next couple of months. So we've been talking to our MVNO partners for well over a year now um, because to really capitalize on the opportunities for 5G, they really need to relook at their own strategies, it provides opportunity, it also provides risk, um, and to consider do they have the capacity, do they have the IT applications to drive the innovation that will be enabled with 5G. So they need to relook at their strategies, they need to look at their agreements. Do they automatically get access to 5G or do they need to start to talking to their network operator? Um, do they need to do those get, get going with the upgrades? Do they need to refresh their commercial model? Um, Ofcom is predicting that data will data usage will increase 13-fold just for consumer use on mobile. So by 2025 that will be 25 gig of data. Do MVNOs have the commercial models that will allow them to grow with that insatiable need for um, consumers alone? And then there's a ton of IoT applications uh, that um, will need, again, different models entirely. So my key takeaways from MVNO World Congress in 2019 is actually it's a much bigger event than previous years, which is really great to see. Um, a kind of a proud parent moment for me is to see a number of our partners here um, and doing really well, talking slots and stands. So our ecosystem is really growing um, and hungry for growth, so feeling positive and excited. Um, I think it is a real time for disruption. There's a lot more IoT use cases that are being discussed. And the kind of attendee has broadened quite significantly from pure MVNO of the past. Um, so that has been really exciting to see. So this event, uh, the MVNO World Congress, is important to three because we're a relatively small operator um, and don't uh, necessarily have a loud voice and are not known to companies outside of the UK 
who might be looking for a partnership in the UK. So it's a really good brand opportunity for us to talk to the market more generally about what we're doing, and, um, which I think is quite unique and quite different, that real spirit of partnership. Um, differentiates us in the market, so it's good to be able to talk about that at these events.